Experience God's wonder walking power as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with simplicity, wisdom, and power. God bless you. In my church, when they appreciate me, they shout. Can I hear people shouting, shouting, shouting? <laughs> Amen. With every sense of humility and every sense of honor, maybe you don't know, but I know, your pastor is one of the most humble pastors I've met. Maybe you don't know what you have. Um, I've seen it in him. And I, I didn't see it recently. I saw it many years ago. Many years ago. The same posture. The same way he honors God's servants. If he was faking it, I would have known. I saw it many years ago. The first time I saw you do what you're exactly doing now was when you brought Apostle. Those days at the uh, cast area, you know, when you brought him for a program. I recall I was around the vicinity when that was going on. And then he was appreciating you and I could see the humility in your person. I was like, there's something about this man of God that is very unassuming is rare to find men of God like that. Let's appreciate God's servant one more time. You are a blessed people. You are a privileged people to have Pastor Chai. I call him the bishop of this house. The bishop of the future. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And please, Let's appreciate the most important person here, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the soon coming King, the Ancient of Days, the King of Glory. Let's give it up to Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah. And then it won't be complete until we appreciate you. Come on, appreciate yourself. Hallelujah. God bless you. you. May be seated in God's presence. Spirit move, move over me. Spirit move, move Spirit move, Spirit move.
help us lord show us details help us comprehend mysteries we honor you in jesus name we pray amen god bless you you may be seated just keep playing on that same stuff but a little bit lower you know. thank you sir god bless you for being around all these years you're honored god bless you this evening i'm gonna attempt doing a little surgery you know to address something that is identified to be a stopper of destinies of ministries this morning when i came here i said there are two anointing god is releasing in this end time one is the apostolic and then the other is the prophetic the apostolic mantle is mantle for fathers but the prophetic mantle is the mantle for sons anywhere god gives a generation an apostle one of the things that shall accompany that apostle is a generation of sons because god cannot propagate his kingdom with just the apostolic they, there's a need for the infusion of the apostolic and the prophetic the prophetic is not necessarily shivering you know anytime we talk about the prophetic people think the prophetic is about i see somebody i see somebody i see somebody no that's not it is the prophetic is a generation of sons have you heard about that word in the bible sons of the prophet anytime you hear the word prophet of the prophetic it's talking about sons okay if you read Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 and 12 you see where the Bible talked about the fivefold ministry he said and then God gave some apostles that's number one the ministry of the apostle is the highest ministry in the order of God's ministerial priority in the order of God's ministry offices the apostles and sometimes in the whole ministry it's just one man that functions in it everybody cannot be an apostle but now beside the office of an apostle god also has an office for sons and any ministry that builds with the apostolic and the prophetic will be a great ministry it cannot be stopped if there are two offices the devil is trying to mess up in the end time church is the apostolic office and the prophetic office and god uses this same principle what you call the father-son order to build God cannot build without this principle. Anywhere you see God do a thing, there is always the principle of the Father, Son, Order. He creates everything in pairs. He creates the principle and He creates the subordinate. He creates the major and He creates the minor. He does not create anything alone. He creates everything in pair. Anywhere you see something existing alone is existing contrary to the principle of God. I can give you some example now. When God created light, the Bible says in the book of Genesis, He created two great lights. The two lights He created were great light. But He said, one is a greater light and the other one is a lesser light. But there are two great lights so you have the sun and then the moon why did he create the sun to have rulership over the day and then the moon to have rulership over the night these are two lights and god created both of them and both of them are actually called great lights and they are both giving the charge to have dominion over different spheres but now there's something we call eclipse of the sun if you did geography you may have an idea of what eclipse means when the moon leaves its position and comes to interfere with the sun an eclipse occurs 
what is eclipse it's just an interruption is the moon leaving its position and interrupting in a sphere that is not its own interrupting a you know a space of influence that is not designed for and each time that happens there is eclipse the sun is the principal with the light the moon harnesses its light from the sun the moon has no light of its own so everything you see the moon shining in the night is what it collects from the sun so for the moon to shine light in the night it has to position itself at an angle of reflection when the sun is showcasing you know or you know emitting those heat and rays the job of the moon is to position itself at an angle where it can harness the heat that comes from the sun so when the sun is done ruling in the daytime the moon can now shine the same light of the sun in the night but now when the moon gets confused and thinks it has light of its own you know what it does it leaves its own place and comes in the daytime to take the position of the sun so it gets the sun to disappear and then it comes into the daytime but the fortunate or the unfortunate thing is that when it does that it realizes it does not have any light so it's of bringing light on the day it casts shadow on the day it casts darkness that's why you see sunlight disappears and sometimes daytime starts looking like nighttime is somebody hearing what i'm saying that's what you call eclipse and every time you have that god actually put that principle in motion to show us what happened in heaven when lucifer came against god's authority that thing lucifer did is called eclipse most of the things you see in creation are principles god put to show us how his kingdom is built for instance the sun and the moon he creates everything in pair when noah was about to you know when the world was about to be destroyed by flood during the time of noah god gave him an instruction apart from building the ark and giving the parameters and the whatever he he should use to build he said take everything in pairs because he wants to destroy the whole world but this time he's going to rebuild what he has destroyed but how will we do that take everything in pair take a male mosquito take a female mosquito somebody said noah is the reason why we have mosquitoes everywhere why we have malaria he said if he knew he would have killed the male mosquito and the female there wouldn't have been any mosquito anywhere he took a female ant and took a male ant. every creature you see was in the ark because everything that didn't enter the ark was wiped out so anything you can see noah collected male millipede female millipede because god uses the principle of two to procreate he uses the principle of two to reproduce that's why see the issue of gay for instance and lesbianism that is an anti-kingdom culture because god doesn't view that way so i don't care who the person is whether it's a bishop or a pope who is telling you that gays have rights to marry themselves that's a lie from the pit of hell it contravenes the principle of god god does not build anything with male and male he builds with male and female he did create them adam and steve he created adam and eve he did create eve and adam he created adam and eve that's a satanic culture So he creates a male and he creates a female. I can give you multiple examples to back up that. You want to create a family, the same principle. Man, woman come together. You can build a powerful family. My son name is Abba. This whole Abba family worldwide came with just two. One male, one female, and then it's a generation now. You have genealogy of Abbas. That's the same way it is with ministry. Okay, let me give you one more example. How did God reclaim the whole world that was lost in sin? Man had fallen from dominion. Man had fallen from glory. And then God had a problem. How do I recreate this whole world? How do I get the people that have lost back to myself? God couldn't have done that alone. What did God do? He said to Jesus, go and die for the people. 
so God is the principal Jesus becomes a subordinate he took the principle of the principal and the subordinate to create this whole world again to get you born again that's what you call the father son order the position Jesus has before God the father is the position of a wife the man or the husband is the one with the seed the sperm he pulls it into the woman after some months she produces maybe one two three as the case may be and you see some who give birth to eight and more just one seed he put inside the thing multiplies it becomes a full grown-up baby so if God wants to accomplish anything he has to find somebody he will put a seed into get him pregnant and it explodes that's what he did with Jesus so he had a body to save the world but now he, need, he needed someone who he could pass that seed over to and then that person takes in and goes into the world that's why the Bible said Jesus is the first to be gotten amongst many brethren he had to die for other brethren to be begotten that's what your mom did when he gave birth to you she had to die a death that led to your coming out of her womb or maybe you don't know that labor is dead when she submits that her body in the laboratory or in the what do you call it labor room she opens her legs and the doctor is screaming push you don't know she's dying the man may be in his house drinking coke and fanta but the woman is there pushing destiny out and sometimes you can see a family of five children ten children that came through one woman that's how you have a lot of sons now because one man gave his life God put the pregnancy in him that seed in him is what has multiplied into all the sons that's what has given rise to all the Billy Grahams that's what has given life to, uh, rise to all the Martin Luther that's what gave rise to all the Tia Lospon all the Catherine Kuman, all the Bishop Chai all the great guys you see everywhere that's what gave rise to them the death of one man that was the wife that submitted herself so that God could impregnate her and then it has given birth to all these things are you now seeing that God uses the father and the son order to create anything? That's how it is in ministry. When God raises an apostle, he gives him a mandate. He puts a burden on him. He puts an assignment on him. But how far that assignment will go is the mean by how willing the people who are rallying around that assignment are willing to die are willing to give themselves in submission are willing to give themselves in loyalty to take up the burden of that mandate and propagate it so you want to see a high flying church a high flying ministry they build with the father son order because sons extend the work of the apostle sons extend the name of their father sons extend the territory and the influence of their father any ministry that only builds on the apostolic will be stunted you need an infusion of the apostolic the father and the prophetic a generation of sons and now i'm going to show you one thing that destroys that order anywhere the devil sees that network coming together he's scared sir he's scared because that's the greatest network you need to change the world all god needed was a jesus just one who can come into agreement with him imagine when you have more than 10 when you have 100 of such people coming together the world has been capsided God doesn't call a man a loner. He calls that man and he rallies people to be the extension of that man. 
if you do not understand it you'll be thinking your pastor is your problem he's not your problem my friend genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion let me show you something you've not seen there before maybe your pastor have shown you and let me just add words to it and god said let us make man and god said let us make man you see that principle there and god said let us so the principle is there's a man with a vision but the vision will not come to pass until there is a let us and god said it is not and the god said it is not and they said in every vision where you find people say we started this vision together wrong because god does not start any ministry with people he starts with one man then he rallies people around the ministry to build the ministry so god is the principal out here but now he needs the us the us factor and god said let us make man ah when i was reading it one time i got a little bit confused i said god said let us make man he said in our image and our likeness and he now said let them have dominion i was a bit confused he said that is serious grammatical tautology or grammatical error what's your name man eh? love it and god said let us make love it in our image and likeness and let them have dominion what is wrong in that statement eh? love it is what singular right love it is one so i shouldn't be saying let them right hey and god said let us make man in your english language man is singular man is plural is that correct so god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and he said let them how how can you say one man should be them it should have been god said it should have been and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him you know why god said them in spite of the fact that he created one man one man was not designed to have dominion the way god programs dominion to take place is that you must find your components and network with them and you can start having influence so in spite of the fact that what god is designing was one man in god's mind dominion will not come until you find your pet dominion will not come until you find your component and let's work with him and begin to work together so the man god created was not having dominion until he found his component so in god's mind until you find your other parts no dominion Destinies are interwoven. Ha. Destinies are interwoven. It's like thread. It's like broomsticks bound together. Anything you do to detach from that plan will end you up in obscurity. See, I'm talking with the microphone. Hello? I'm talking with the microphone. But guess what? This microphone is networking with a lot of things to produce sound. There's a battery inside. There's a power button here. It doesn't end there. There's a speaker. It doesn't end there. There's a mixer. It doesn't end there. There are wires. So now, if I decide to turn off just this button, big speakers is talking from but if this thing says i won't cooperate this thing won't talk so the small the small body say ah, i refuse to cooperate after i'm not the speaker i'm not the senior pastor i'm not the mixer i'm not the 32 channels i'm not the cables i won't talk so if it stops doing its job it loses relevance in this system the relevance of this button is what is contributing to the whole work here.
the, what is contributing to ensure that this whole speakers everything here is producing sound is what makes his place relevant when people don't understand that they can frustrate their destinies this is what has kept south east where it is that's why you can hardly count ministries from evil land that is doing great in all the nations of the world why because we refuse to study the real things in ministry there's something that makes ministry the real deal it's beyond all this bible and shaking around your shaking the anointed hey anointing is everything yet anointing is everything you can be gifted as important as your anointing is it's not too important to god as important as your gift is it's not too important to god to god obedience is more important than sacrifice to god cooperation is more important than your power do you see something ah, oh bishop there are things to talk about on that time one look at samson is one of the strongest man who has ever lived but do you see anytime they preach the story of samson <laughs> you are quick to say samson failed in life because of woman now lie samson's failure in the area of woman is about the third mistake of samson or the fourth or fifth mistake there are other mistakes before the that one i can show you the major mistake of samson was that he was so powerful but he had no armor very powerful guy this is someone who will go to the city gate beat everybody or put the city put it on his back collect pepsi from fridge he'll be drinking and going up to the mountain that was how he he will use the jaw of an animal and wipe out tens of thousands of soldiers very strong guy but the day came he became very weak as a human being yeah you are a human being no? You will always get to that point where you will be weak. The strength of an army is the synergy. It's not the one man show team. Southeast has a reputation for one man show, and it has kept us where we are, one man show. So guess what? The day Samson's enemy, enemies met him at his weakest point, there was no army to fight for him. If Samson had an army, guess what when Delilah shaved his hair that army would have been his strength you know what Samson would have done when he got up from the bed and then he he found that all the muscles are gone all the energy is gone you know what he would have done he would have raised a lamb he would have called for, for maybe a hundred troops of soldier men they would have come and started beating those Philistines and while they are fighting he would have collected another 100 and he would have taken off through the window and then go to a city somewhere and wait for a while until the hair grows back again but this time when he did like this he was weak then there was no army to cover the man and then the man was wounded a great man was captured and brought down to size reduced to bread it was not the woman that killed him lack of army does not the woman first mistake lack of army because if you want to tell me it's a woman even david had more problems yes now david had more problems and you see there were attacks from everywhere coming against david remember this is the same david that killed goliath and then do you know that was a major giant he killed maybe you've not read david raised mighty men that killed more giants than he killed he raised mighty men who devoured more giants and then when he was met in a weak state the bible said that there are rows of giants who came to smite David and when they came David was at his weakest point all he did was to raise a lamb and some of his mighty men came in and slew them there immediately and they took their king and ran away what southeast has done over the years is to slaughter the necks of their generals I will show you what I captioned the spirit of Absalom. 
that's what the devil is using and that's what he started in heaven i will become like the most high i will exalt my throne above his throne i will i will i will self-aggrandizement self-seeking self-pursuit you know what it did to him it destroyed him from inside and then he started destroying god started fighting god not that he was fighting but he had already infected one third of the whole angels you know anytime i study this i usually ask what did lucifer say to those angels that made them follow him oh you think it was one day before you see a rebel open up rebellion open up his disloyalty for all to see he has been disloyal tomorrow i will show you the 12 stages of disloyalty 12 stages you see that it's a stage thing that you might have told me you may not be in the process it's a stage thing what did he do what was he doing how many years did it take him to inject those virus to inject the virus to inject the virus <laughs> hello listen maybe you don't like what i'm teaching you when i preach in church on sunday i can preach faith i can preach grace and talk kinds of powerful things when i talk to disciples i use injections we don't talk faith we don't talk grace we talk the real thing because we are facing real issues real issues real issues i will help you demystify some of the confusions you've been having you begin to see ministry with a different light you begin to see your man of god in a different light some of the things you think are issues you will find that there are no issues but the devil makes you capitalize on them and makes you think there are issues and he arms you to kill your ministry he gives you the arrows and the gun to shoot your pastor but this is the same man god desired to take you to your destiny there are some of you here who will not fly to nations until you understand what i'm teaching you some of you god designed your going to the world all over the world by virtue of bringing you into this ministry if you do not understand it if the tire in my car decides to bust he just wakes up one morning and says, don't worry today i'm going to bust <laughs> you will bust the car will be packed but guess what you too will be packed because you are busted somebody else I'm going to destroy Pastor Chai. I'll destroy the work. Carry on. You too will be destroyed. You too will be stagnated. Go and check ministries where sons rose against their pastor, where sons rose against their prophet, and the fourth man maybe held him back from doing what God. Check all those people. You see, there's a limit, and these are people who shall be mighty men. These are people who should have been great voices. Which one do you prefer? To be a number 500 who is a global figure or a number one who is a local champion? Everybody wants to be a general overseer. Everybody wants to be on his own. Everybody wants to start his own work. That's why you have mushroom churches everywhere in the southeast. I go to my father's ministry, for instance, Dominion City, and I see sons doing great things just like my friend and program pastor Bob's regional pastor of Enugu of uh, the whole southeast go to his church and see what he's controlling when i look at it, i said he's not a general overseer he says son who allowed himself to be raised by a father and by teaming up with his father and closing his eyes to some issues or some worry because every, i'm going to show you some things he has allowed himself to be who he is today and i want to say without me saying what he's greater than many general overseers in the southeast controlling thousands of whatever Some souls would have been great stars in nations by understanding submission, by covering their pastor, by covering their prophet. Ah, they would expose it, opened up his mistakes and his flaws, and gave the devil not only room to attack the man, but also room to attack their destinies. God is going to arrest somebody in this meeting. He's going to change somebody this season all that the devil has stolen all the canker worm has eaten all that the pama worm has eaten we place it in man right now they will restore them seven times yeah. i can hear your amen yeah.
that's why if there's anything to fight in the church is the spirit of rebellion the spirit of rebellion is called the absolute spirit that eclipse spirit <laughs> I was talking to some of my leaders one time in church and I told them listen God is more interested in a place than in a person I was shocked more interested in a place than in what do you see as old as the earth is sir people have come and got the earth remain it. the earth has never died people have come died buried the earth still lives to god placement is important than person see adam for instance i don't know if you've read your bible when adam fell from grace hey and the Bible says God came as usual at the cool of the evening to have fellowship with them. Who remembers the question God asked? Do you remember the question he asked? Adam, Adam, what? Can I get you? Adam, Adam, what? Wow. So you know that. And then I was asking God, why did you ask where is Adam? You are an all-knowing God. You should have just appeared in the garden and exactly where Adam was. The Bible says that Adam when Adam had the full steps of God, what did he do? He went somewhere and hid himself with Eve. Why? Because they were naked. But God, being an all-knowing God, I want to believe God knew where they were. Because God is an all-knowing being. It's not possible that God will come into the garden and be confused about where Adam is. He's a spirit being. He can't see anything. If people like us who are the prophet, he can see things. How much more God will give us a gift? He must have seen where they are. So I asked God, God, you, you, are, you are a mysterious God. You could have just appeared. One time, bam, I've caught you guys. So these are you guys hiding. You just need to look for them. But what did God do? When he entered the garden, he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? Why? Because to God, the place he placed Adam is important than Adam. Oh, can I shock you? He didn't say, Adam, how are you? If I say, hello, sir, how are you? It's about you. It means my focus is on you. It means my focus is on your well-being. But if I ask you, where are you? I am not looking out for your well-being. I'm checking your position. I'm checking out for your place. I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. So check if I call you now and ask you, Pastor, where are you? That means I'm interested in where you are than who you are or than how you are. The first thing when you call people, hello, how are you? Is that what you do? How are you? That means you're interested in the state of that person's being. But if I call you, hello, where are you? <laughs> it's a different thing I'm saying. It means I'm interested in where you are. It's possible you are somewhere I don't want you to be. Have you seen the difference there? So to God, where he placed Adam is more important than where Adam was or than how Adam was. Remember, when he finally saw them, he drove them out of the garden and collected the garden back not man god first redeemed the garden before man this whole redemption that jesus came and gave us took thousands of years the first thing god redeemed was the place so he drove man out immediately and put cherubs all over the four cardinal points with places so he put barricade there and secured that place and he sent man out that was when God touched me. Nobody is too important in the church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You think you are too indispensable. God is going to send you away. But your place another man will take. Future house is more important than anybody. Because there is a vision God has. For this generation. Only future house can bring it to pass. So it does not matter who you think you are. What matters most to God is future house. 
you are only privileged to be here to share in what God is doing in the nations. What did Adam do to collect the garden? There was a garden before Adam. God already created the garden before man was created. You just met a garden free of charge. And you want to abuse your opportunity and abuse your privilege. God is going to send you out of that place and collect back that place. Tell your neighbor, calm down, calm down, calm down. What is happening in your head? Just remove it and calm down. That's why sir, in my uh, they know me very well. I show them the door. <laughs> if I know I'm dealing with foolishness, I can talk with you. If I know I'm dealing with disloyalty, I open the door wide. And I found that every time I'm dealing with such issue, <laughs> God already has at least their replacements. Yes. He already has. I'm going to show you who your man of God is. And then I'm going to show you this issue of Absalom. And I will show you some of the traits. If you see it in yourself, you need humility to repent. I don't have all the time. After that, I'm going back to church. I have three nights of encounter. I'll be in church from now till tomorrow. <laughs> don't be smarting. Drilling. 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 I told God, Lord, I'm not going to pastor a church. Please, if you're going to raise men who would wipe the shame of Southeast, can I be one? That's what I want. That's why when you called me, in spite of all my schedules, I said I will come. Why? Because this is the issue. This is the issue. We need a generation of sons that will march. I was in Lagos when I flew back. I was in Lagos, and guess what? I visited more than 11 outstanding churches in Lagos. And I was crying. I went to KICC. I met with Femi Fashero, the national superintendent of KICC in Nigeria. Young man. You know what he told me? He's a man of God. God didn't call me to start any ministry. He called me to minister to Pastor Matthew. He says, as a matter of fact, I don't even have a calling. He said, it is Pastor Matthew Ashimoto that has a calling. He said, God called Pastor Matthew. Pastor Matthew called him. You see, the problem of Aaron and Miriam, does God speak to Moses alone? When God appeared to them, he said, who are you that you are not afraid to talk against my servant Moses? You know, when I read that part, it dawned on me for real. God speaks to them also. Hey, they were not wrong in what they said. Hey, they were not wrong. Does God speak to Moses alone? Does he also talk to us? Why is he always passing all those nonsense judgment? And God appeared in the camp. And God didn't go to Moses to talk to him about it. He went directly to the two of them. That means what they were saying is correct. God also talked to them. But that God is speaking to you doesn't mean that he called you. Don't mistake that God spoke to you to mean that God called you. And then hear me. God is not an author of confusion. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel. It was God calling, but Samuel was running to Eli. You know why? Because God was using the voice of Eli to call him. And then God was doing it on purpose because I cannot talk to Samuel until Eli gives me express permission. When God is to take authority, he does not break the authority. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? He does not break the authority. He's a God of order. We have them a lot in this southeast. I heard the Lord told me. God ministered to me the night. If I be a man of God, shut up, my friend. How many of your pastors' quotes do you know? My pastor said, in my thought, I check it. The Holy Ghost told me, the Holy Ghost told me, if I catch it in your mouth, it's me the Holy Ghost talks to. Everything he says to me, go and say. That's how it works. Jesus was talking to his disciples while he was living. He said to them, he said, go into all the nations of the world and preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He said, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Don't preach your own message. Preach what I preach to you. Teaching them to observe all things that I commanded you. It's not going to manufacture your own revelation. 
the ground said, but you have a pastor child who is saved. Jealous for sin. Then he said, but if you see that you are a rebel, you need to be quarantined and disciplined. I said, I'm going to cure the madness in Southeast. You need a madman to change it. <laughs> it's a madness that needs to leave. So you see a son like that. If you see what they got, he's packing that dome, the prayer dome, 5,000 sitters. He runs two services. And he jams the food. If you see his building service. A son. And much as you know, he's in London, have a rest. Can you see that that guy is also on TV? He's on channels TV. Every day he broadcasts at every single day. He speaks, then in the night his pastor comes up on the same channel. He, he goes in the morning, his pastor goes in the evening. Every blessed day. But you see, even with such opportunity, he has not even resolved it. He has not considered, I now I'm on cable. The whole of Nigeria beyond knows me. Because everybody has access to channels TV. He's the best TV in Nigeria. That's a good opportunity for Satan to enter your head. What do these Yorubas know that evils have not learned? See how we are scattered like sheep without shepherd everywhere. Everybody's apostle, doctor, reverend, bishop, and all of all that. When you should have been a great voice in nations by just submitting. Father, son, order. I finished from the elevation church. You need to see. I finished from there. I went to the Covenant Christian Center. As to put you, the guy who does the platform. I finished from there. I went to this time, some day. I went everywhere. And anyone you go to, you think you've seen the best. Until you go to the next. This is how they have them in batches. All the generations. After Pa Elton, oh, that's a sorry for another day. After Pa Elton, the man who launched this, you know. Nigerian revival that swept the whole place. Aside from the east, though, we lost it. He actually told us before he died many years. He said to those fathers, those days, that if, it's, if we are not careful, that this anointing and this revival that has started in the east in Nigeria, we will lose it to the west. And he gave us the reasons why. He gave five reasons. He said, number one, you have to and deal with pride. If Igbos don't deal with pride, they will lose power, spiritual leadership to, to the southwest. He said, you need to go and deal with ignorance. He said, you need to deal with greed. Greed, greed, this lost for money. Because that's the biggest reason people betray their pastor sometimes. Money. He said, you need to go and deal with self, self. That thing that is self-seeking. You want to marry at the expense of your pastor's decision, or your pastor's instruction. You want to get that money. You want to get that business. You want to fire abroad at the expense of what your pastor once done. These are the enemies. The devil is using The arrows is using to fight the southeast. And by Elton Ward, the people he was talking to were the Bishop Monica. The uh, Bishop Paul, what you could them? Those days. The Barista Mecca one them. The Mba, Apostle Mba of Riches of Christ. And then, they heard it, but they didn't hear it. He spoke and then this, this started. The wave was sweeping everywhere in the country. Ministries were rising everywhere. But that was the same time we had him break out. Grace of God mission was making it from nowhere. And everyone came out. This one came out. Riches of Christ was making wave everywhere. From nowhere, Apostle Mba went to, what do you call it, to Jerusalem and came back with some, you know, new doctrines. And he produced and said, ah, no, in Jerusalem, Jesus is not called Jesus. He's called Yeshua. So let's start calling him Yeshua. He said, the original day of worship is not Sunday, but Saturday. And they trust me, there was nothing wrong with what he was saying. This is Jewish culture. And the Jews are the founders of Christianity. And then the people became angry and said, no, 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 no. That's a lie. That's a lie from the book of hell. You know what they did? He's not going to pray for their pastor. He's of going to their closet and praying, Lord, if it is heresy that has come on our pastor, please, for the sake of our destinies, help him. Our destinies are in this house. Help him, Lord. For the sake of what you want to do with this man and this vision, help him. We bring covering on our pastor. That lie. You know what they did? They broke out of the ministry. National Evangelical Mission started from there. Bread of Life Mission started from there. Uh, this other one started from there. Save the Lost. This other one started from there. This one, all kinds of ministries came out from there. Check all those ministries. And then the Apostle Ba has been crippled. Riches of Christ is gone. Why? Because of that rebellious spirit. And then we lost it. The West took it. Which guys took it in the West? Adeboye. Oyedebo. 
by L.T. in his first generation of that revival movement. Then the Adeboye in the west, Oedebo in the west. Then also in the south, because there's another guy in the south that so far L.T. direct. His name is late Archbishop Benson Dahosa. Second generation of Pa'elti's lineage. Then you have the likes of Bishop Welloke. He's not really okay. Partly second generation in a way, but he was the youngest amongst them. And many of them like that. You see that second generation is still vibrant. You see as they You see your uniform. Okay, Archbishop Benzi has gone. Of course, when Pa Elton died, the Adeboyes and the Oyedebos submitted on their Archbishop. Because you understand the principle. They looked for the one who was the closest. Because the Adeboyes and the rest didn't have the access that it also had to Pa Elton. So when Elton left, the next Elton amongst them was Bishop, Archbishop Benzi. All of them came under him. As well as serving the man. Yes, Christ of Heaven himself was even. He was even a male boy. He was one running male for Papa Idahosa. They said that when he when Papa Idahosa finished eating, he's the one to go clear the plate. When he goes to the kitchen, the leftover he eats. Mama Idahosa will come and say, Have you eaten? He said, He has not yet to. He's okay, eat the leftover of Papa. <laughs> Faithfully going from city to city, giving meals, delivering meals, knocking on the doors of offices to give meals. And then, when Papa died, the one who now stepped in for the West into that office is Adeboye. You think Oedebo doesn't know what he's doing by coming under Adeboye? Adeboye is not the original founder of Redeem. He was already a university doc and then came under an illiterate man who was the original founder of Redeem, interpreting for him. The man didn't know English, he would speak his Yoruba. Adeboye would interpret in English and then one day the man gave a particular assignment only at the boy he passed and that's how he knew he was going to be the one to succeed him I don't want to talk about that it's a long story and the boy he took over the mandate of reading he's not the original founder but guess what the Yorubas understand hierarchy they understand order so you see Oedebo go and put his head under Adebo Adebo he lays hand on Oedebo See how the habit in chains. People like Ade Farasi, I was with him in House of the Rock Church, the Rock Cathedral, 15,000 sitters. They took me to the whole building. You'll get lost inside yourself if you're not careful. It's 10 generations. All those that don't come in there, it's 10 generations. Ghana, and all this were from Pa'elti's lineage. Duncan William came out of Ida Hussein. In the southeast, you can hardly call out the ones who. Only one man was very fortunate enough to get some access to Idahosa while he was still alive and died. My pastor. He got a little close. The rest of the southeastern pastors were doing power, 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 flow, and all that. Were running from places to places. She had to post. They didn't go to put their head down to understand these things. Now watch it. There are other people who are under this, they are deboyes, and then the Oedebos and all that. Still in that Yoruba class. See their day in me. They is third generation. Elenche is third generation. See people like um, uh, a lot of them. Matthias Shimolo is second generation. A lot of them. They have their second, they have their third, they even have their fourth generation. And they are all being exports. The elevation pastor is fourth generation, not dead. It's not Zulu. Poor Jew is within, I think, fourth generation or so. Covenant Christians are fourth. They have them in their batches. In the southeast, you can hardly identify an outstanding second generation. The Bishop Paul Machuku is second generation. Bishop Wadika is second generation. Uh, Bishop. Uh, um, What's his name? Obi. Second generation. Yes, and then he's been to my church before. A, couple, a lot of them, second generation. You can hardly identify 
one that is very conspicuous. Even our poor watch who is just on Isha, he has that his wave. Grace of God is just within the southeast. It has not broken into, the, into Nigeria, not to talk of breaking out of the country. It's only in third generation that you have one outstanding evil man, Pastor David. Only in third generation. This guy, in what do you call it, in Uyo, Intia, Intia, who is a son under, uh, under what is his name? The name church is fourth generation, sir. He's my generation. I'm fourth generation. My pastor is third generation. But you see, outside the east, even people in the fourth generation already three days in the southeast, both the second, the second is sparking up. The third, you just have maybe one or two. Then the, the fourth, that's where the whole confusion is. That's when you have a generation of slave queens. That's the generation of people who can. And God told me one day, he said, that's why I hooked you up with Pastor David. So I can invest in you some of his, some of that disciplinary culture. It's because it's going to take a high level of discipline to break this chest. It's going to take a man who does not smile on some things to break it. <laughs> I don't know if this is I'm saying are very helpful to you. So you understand where we are. Where are we? Check. Where are we? Where are we? There's just one thing if the church corrects it. The church in the southeast corrects it. Look at what Enente has done. He's just 50 years. See what he has done. 100,000 sitters. His pastor, anyway, is 60 something. See what he has done. This thing is flowing. Why is it not flowing towards the southeast? Just like you were telling me, sir. When the thing starts hitting, who do we run to? You look, it's like, where are the fast? Then, okay, where are the sons? This is not the time to pastor preach on, preach on. No, 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 no. This is the time to go back and understudy these issues. Get back to the archive of history. Why are we where we are? It should give you concern. The thing it gives me concern. So much of I feel so ashamed. There's no church in the southeast that is comfortably sitting five thousand, owned by a southeasterner in the southeast. Five thousand. One service, I'm just, just one service. Oedipo is running five services, 50,000 church, and he jams them with overflow. What an nature has been. And do you know what is shocking? If you go there, 70% of the membership are Igbos. Sorry if you're not an Igbo here. I'm sorry, I'm not being ethnic. How many of you, if you're not an Igbo, put up your hand, let me see. I'm not being ethnic. Even if you're not Igbo, at least you're in Southeast. So since you're here, you're an Igbo woman. You see, you see the issue now. So you see, we have a lot of our sons and children there doing well, but we come back home, we are not doing well in our own place. What is that spirit? It's called the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of disloyalty, lack of submission. I've taken enough time. I've not even gone into my teaching, sir. Maybe tomorrow I'll finish it off. But let me read the scripture. And explain a few things, and tomorrow I'll continue. So the way it's doing in my spirit, I'm feeling like having a money session tomorrow morning. I don't know, but if we can do it, fine. I don't mind. Even after my training, I can come straight here. We need to understand these things. If it's not possible, we'll just leave for the evening session. I need to know that my passion with your pastor, for your pastor, is too heavy. I have passion for him deep passion for him deep passion whatever it will cost to invest in this ministry I will do it whatever deep passion and I'm not the type who betrays that's not my business I'm not here for any of you my friend I preach all this year I'm preaching I only came here to help your pastor build with him I didn't come here to come and be looking at people's faces who will meet me. You come and meet me at the end of the service. I'll say, you don't do that. You bring a seat to me. You go and give it to him first. 
If I want anything from him, he's the one I'll call. I don't have any business with your phone numbers. Because this Absalom spirit does not only work with insiders, sometimes it works with guest ministers. Because there are babies in the church. So a guest minister comes to the church and then finish preaching. The baby starts following him outside. And the untrained minister starts giving his number. That's a mistake. The untrained minister start booking appointment for what? It's an absolute spirit. Ministers who do that don't go far. They don't go far. I don't know if it's my friend. Only your pastor is my friend. You are all the sons and daughters of my friend. That's how it is. I don't deal with you as, ah, that's my daughter. No, I deal with you as the sons and daughters of Pastor Charlie. If only Igbo ministers understand these things, would have been something else. We are the most anointed people, the most intelligent people, the most powerful people. But see, go to a day in this church, it's motivational preaching. You will hear deep content. Just 30 minutes, not just service. Service is finished. And you see crowd everywhere. What do they have? Order, discipline, ethics. People think maybe my little secret is anointing. No, it's order, it's ethics. I just started yesterday. It's ethics. It's principles. You won't know them until you come under a man who knows them and learn them. It's a conscious thing. You don't get it by anointing. You can get gifts of the spirit, but fruit of the spirit are cultivated. You cultivate fruits. You don't impact fruits. You can impart gifts. So you can get anointed religious pastor. Because that's what got into Satan's head. Me too, I'm anointed. Anointed cherub. No ethics. Okay, second Samuel, chapter 15, verse 1. I show you a little one, Absalom. Absalom is the son or was the son to David. And then, the guy there is smart. God bless you. After this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. This is a son to David, but also one of his lieutenants in the army. So look at verse 2. Now Absalom would rise early and stand beside the way of the gate. So it was whenever anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision. Who is the king? David comes to the king for a decision that Absalom would call to him and say, What city are you from? And he would say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Verse 3. Then Absalom will say to him, look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you. He said, there's no deputy of the king to hear you. See, you have a good case. Well, you see, pastor is too busy to give you attention. Look, look at verse 4. Look at verse 4. Moreover, Absalom would say, Oh, that I were made judge in the land. And everyone who has any suit or cause would come to me, then I would give him justice. That's how Absalom talk. If only you knew that sickness that killed your grandmother. She pastor came and prayed and she still died. Ah! If only it was me you called. I've been in this church. Some of you don't know I'm so anointed. Pastor is not as half as anointed. He doesn't just want to recognize me because he's afraid of me. You are an Absalom. Anointed Absalom. See, we have entered deliverance now. Things will start manifesting. 
I'm bringing fire. One way it happens is that once this thing starts coming, some of you will be very uncomfortable. And I will look at your face and I will catch you. Pastors, if you want to detect these loyal pastors or workers in your church, you don't need to come to come and pray. Just come to come and look at their faces. I'll tell you who will kill you, sir. I'm trained in this one. This is my field. Because there are signs. You know, doctor takes you to a lab and does that. You don't know what is wrong with you, but the lab will show everything. There are things he does that reads what is going on in your body. So look at this young man. If only pastor had a deputy like me, I would have brought justice to everybody in this land. What is he saying indirectly? The pastor is effective. The pastor is not good enough for you guys. The pastor is not the best for you guys. He doesn't have time. That's why you see in most churches, you have some assistant pastors or associate pastors or workers or leaders who are close to the pastor. What they do is go behind the pastor, stealing the hearts of the flock. That's an absolute spirit. Anytime the devil wants to destroy a great work, he does not destroy it from outside. He comes from within. So, sir, there are people you're preaching to every Sunday. You think they are with you. Their hearts are far. After service, they are in the houses of your brethren asking, what do you think about the message of pastor last Sunday? Do you, uh, do you, uh, mm -mm. Do you think our pastor is not losing anointing? It's like our pastor is now getting dry though. What do you think? Those are the kind of people you give them opportunity to preach. Maybe pastor is not around. Kai, that's the day they will show. So they grab the mic. They won't even appreciate the man on whose altar they are standing. Somebody shout a big hallelujah. That's the day they want to show anointing listen to their message from a to z they will never say pastor taught me they will never say pastor said they will only be saying what the holy ghost told them when i was praying for this service the holy ghost told me that there's somebody here oh hallelujah give your neighbor a high five and tell him never you are the one i'm talking to the demons in your village they are gonna bow down can i hear you say an a you have them in the church disloyal assistant pastor <laughs> one of my pastors was preaching in church one time was he preaching powerfully yes sir powerfully the message was flowing i just picked my mic you come to church there are always two mics on my table you've been there you've seen them. two mics it doesn't need it <laughs> for emergency you preach and preach you won't know when I pick the mic and say, my friend, get down from that place. I'm going to see you. I do it. It's on the service. I don't need to send you paper. Because I will check. Is a guy in order? It's not what you're preaching. Is that you're observing the principles, the ethics. You come to your pastor's altar. The first thing you do is honor the man. Honor your pastor. Whether it's testimony you came to give, you come on the altar. You don't say, like, hey, brethren, ha, praise the Lord. Brethren, I have a special number. And they say, go straight to the point. Then you bring special number. You are living in rebellion. If you know how little, this rebellion, you think is a big thing. Little things, I will show you things. And then you just get, hey, I was in the car yesterday coming from Palm Sites. When we reach Shake Junction, hey, hallelujah. <laughs> the moment we got to Shake, look at this luxurious bus. APC luxurious bus was coming with speed. And our driver just parked in the middle of the road. 
And I said, pleading the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And this boss misdirection and entered the bush. He didn't hit us. Brethren, I am Tito. Oh, glory. Oh, Tito. Oh, Dijama. Now, Jesus, you are walking in this loyalty. You know what a good son does? Brethren, praise the Lord. I want to thank God for his loving kindness towards me and also appreciate my pastor and my father for the covering he has provided over me and my family were it not for his prayers and his covering the enemies would have collected me like bread on the highway it was on Thursday while I was coming back hey you start giving your testimony that's a son. You know what happens is that you activate more of the grace and the covering on your pastor over your life. There's something Reverend Tom knows that makes him follow Pastor Chris. The way he follows. Till tomorrow he kneels down for the man. Reverend Tom. And yesterday they said, come to him. Abioye. And these men have issues. Oh, look at Reverend Chris. It's only in the southeast when the minister experiences scandal. The church gang up and kill their man of God. But look at other men with their own scandals. Reverend Biondu Fatoyobo of Koza. When his own hit, it was everywhere on social media. He is left with a girl. Can we talk about real things here? He is left with a girl in London. The news everywhere on the social media, TV, and all that. That was when that church became more popular, became more renowned, and became more successful. That's when TD Jakes them were coming. Creflo Dollar came. Mike Mudok was coming. Ah, even Kenneth Copeland came. Benny Hinn came. All those great men. So they know about the scandal of the man. Why did they go? There's something else these guys know. It's something else these guys know and then the whole church ganged up is of killing their pastor they put him up there's something that god is looking for in his servant is beyond what you are searching i want to look at this pastor very well the way he looks at some sisters in the church there's something about that pastor i'm checking he will preach and come around us and do her eyes like this should that man be a pastor are you sure that guy should be a pastor? You are the one who have that time. God doesn't have that time. And I will show you from your Bible. I have found David, a man after my heart. Oh, the David who was an immoral, amoral, completely corrupt in every definition of it. Was a man, God says, a man after my heart. What about King Saul who was rejected by God? Did you hear that King Saul slept with a girl? Not even talk about somebody's wife. Did you hear that? That was the perfect man. In fact, he went to battle, killed all the Amalekites, and then Samuel said, do not bring anything, but kill all. And because he was such a good man, he loves to give God sacrifice. He cannot go to battle and fight. And after fighting and winning, how can he come back empty-handed without a sacrifice? So he thinks Samuel is making a mistake. How can you tell me to kill all and not sacrifice to my God? very good motive doesn't God like sacrifice and he came back with cows when Samuel came he said what is all this God's man I'm hearing he said ah I don't know where you got this your ideology that we should kill everything you say you're a pastor and you don't give seed you don't sow seed me I'm a good king I don't do that, those kind of things I brought them so I can sacrifice them to God Hi. God heard from heaven and told Samuel, tell that guy I've rejected him. He said, why are you rejecting me? I am giving you sacrifice. He said, no. Don't you know obedience is preferred than sacrifice? What was God checking in Saul and David? It is not action. It is the heart. It is the motive of the heart. That song you are singing in church and lifting up your hands and whining. What is the motive? That preaching you are preaching, they gave you a What is the motive? Are you preaching to tie the hearts of your 
father's children to them or to get loyalty to yourself is the heart the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart is the heart and guess what Saul lost it David got it yet he was the most corrupt king that's where a lot of churches get it wrong they are studying things God is not studying they are looking for things God is not searching for when God meets with your pastor the things God is dealing with your pastor on you'll be so shocked it's beyond what you are dealing with every man God is using God is still working on ah, I say God knows your pastor past, present and future before he called him and he didn't make a mistake why are you the one deciding whether he should have been called or not God saw all the mistakes in Solomon and he chose him if I give you 700 concubines and 300 wives he gave one. can you carry it one man carried 1000 women yet he's recorded in the Bible holy Bible not immoral Bible you call it holy Bible August Solo is here please I beg you when you go home tear your Bible because everybody recorded here are people with issues Solomon 1000 wife we never even start God said we should do uh, is it not Paul that said we should do one woman one woman Solomon had 1000 church was still going on he didn't know he built the temple and people were in the church why are you the one having issues take your eyes off nonsense and focus on your destiny the plan and the purpose God brought you to this place is what should be your business it's not pastor you cannot judge your pastor the one who called him is the one that has that power you can't who has made you a judge over another man's servant If the devil wants to destroy your destiny and destroy your ministry he comes inside and he makes you a CID a detective in the church I will show you how the Absalom spirit works I don't have all the time but before that Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1 can I show you something briefly on that I want to just show you briefly who, who, who is a man of God where does he come from what makes a man of God Remember, he's first a man before of God. He said, For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. See the mystery I want to show you again. Every high priest is taken from where? Not from heaven, not from angels. Every high priest is taken from amongst men, and he says, and is appointed for who? For men. So stop confusing yourself by thinking your pastor is a superstar. He's a he's a, a god. Stop thinking you're the only one who has rights to feel the things you feel. Stop thinking you're the only one who has the right to make mistakes. Stop thinking you're the only one who has the exclusive permit to err. Ah, when a brother in church errs, it's normal. When a pastor errs, it's not normal. Who told you? He is a man taken from amongst men. That he's preaching that is anointed that is filled with the gifts of the spirit doesn't make him less of a man he's still a man and then the bible said he is given and appointed for men 
He now added, in this pertaining to God. So please, before you start seeing the things pertaining to God, understand he is a man taken from men, appointed to men, then in things pertaining to God. You want to know your pastor from the standpoint of things pertaining to God first, you will fail. You have to understand that your pastor has a humanity just like he has a divinity. The Bible says he has put these treasures in eighteen vessels. The treasures are in eighteen vessels. Everything God is using, God is still cleaning up. I want you to write it in capital letter. Everything God is using, call it to more by. Call him. Um, Oh, that's one great general. Oh, I'm happy you were with him. The Ibus hurt him to a point of no return. Ah, you see? Ha! Ah. He said they hurt him to a point of no return. Reverend Man Naji, who came to my place and was here. <laughs> he said one time he went to Omar and he said, Omar, please bless me. He said, What is your name? He said, Iman Naji. He said, I can't bless you. Are you Igbo? He said, I can't bless you. He said, leave my place. He said, why? He said, just leave. You're an Igbo man. Go. That's how we are. There's something about us. I say, if you know man, anointed, has his weaknesses. Oh, he's a human being enough to feel hot. You now see that men of God are not God of men. They are first men. They feel. When you hurt them, they feel it. Let me tell you something. A lot of pastors who started well in the spirit are ending up in the flesh not because they love the things of the flesh, but because of what people who should have covered them in little mistakes did to them. They blew it and exposed it and left them to white dogs. So let me tell you something. If you know what art can do to men of God, there's a level you persecute your man of God with your mouth, he won't care again. Yes, sir. That thing you're persecuting him for, he'll blow it in your face. Yes, he won't care. You have the God-given responsibility to protect the gifts you have. You see a little fault, pray for him. Let me tell you, any mistake or error God gives you a access to see in your pastor is your test, not his test. It's not his test, it's your own test. Noah was drunk, very intoxicated with wine, and was staggering. And then fell off and his clothes. You know, those days they wear gown. The whole thing was off. So all his private assets were out. And then his son called Ham, who is the father of Africa, which is why Africa is the way it is, came and saw his nakedness. Yes, no. And started laughing. <laughs> Hey, Papa, you will stop amazing me. See, anointed fool. I went to his two brothers and said, Come and see your father. He's naked. Ha! When they came, the Bible said they turned their eyes immediately. Got rapper. They didn't even go with their fronts. They went behind us. And they dropped it, covered the man. The drunk Noah woke up after hours of sleep drunk man and he said to Jephthah and his brother Jephthah and his brother you are blessed nations will serve you you will be above and not beneath and to harm cost is you and your descendants a slave of your brethren shall you be cost the man when i read it i said lord how come a drunk man knew what happened 
Hello? Your pastor may be drunk in the flesh once in a while. His spirit doesn't get drunk. You see that thing inside God put? He's still alive. Ay, 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 ay. I don't think you understand what I mean. I say, your pastor may be in a wrong state. His spirit doesn't enter a wrong state. I don't care how much you are used to electricity. Touch naked wire. That's how your pastor is. Old. There's something inside that can shock whether he's drunk or not. God will allow you to have access to some information to test what you will do. You see that thing that Ham did was a test. And then he destroyed him because he failed the test. And you see the other two brothers. It was the same test. But that test shut them up. The other ones were wiped out. That's why if you're in this church, you are close to your pastor, my friend. Pray. Pray. Because Satan is close to you. Being close to your pastor is dangerous. Oh, some of you think it's a good thing. It's dangerous. You go see things. Sometimes you see him where he has lost his temper. If you want to see a man of God, yes, he's a man of God. Because he feels what you feel. Sometimes you see your man of God in a state of the flesh. Sometimes you will talk like a normal human being. You'll be wondering, is it the same man who preached? God will allow you access to some of those things to test what you will do. And if you don't handle that situation right, you can't be blessed. God cannot lift you. Everything God is using, God is still cleaning up. And I want to put it to you. Everything you use, you clean. Oh. The cloth you're wearing now, wear it for only three days. Don't wash it. Just try. And smell the cloth and see. But please let me ask you. How many of you have worn a cloth and you threw it away because it was dirty? How many of you? What do you do when you wear a cloth and it gets dirty? You wash it. Let me tell you. God is in the constant business of washing us. Don't throw us away. God is in the business of cleaning us up. Don't throw your pastor away. Any information you're privileged to have about your man of God is a test. Is a test. And this thing destroyed Absalom. Please, can you show me um, uh, Absalom chapter? Um, sorry, Second Samuel. Rather, I said Absalom. Second Samuel chapter fifteen. You see, Absalom is in my head now. Absalom everywhere. You have them a lot in church. I bind Absalom in this place in the name of Jesus. Second Samuel chapter fifteen. Show me. I want to pick just one more scripture because someone will be asking me why did Absalom go after his father because the guy was looking for the father to kill him what was that thing that got him angry let's look at it in the jiffy second Samuel 15 let me read a little further just five to six and then i'll now show you why absalom was angry with the father to let you know it's normal for you to be offended in the church as long as you have a pastor offenses will come absalom's problem was simply offense and that's the only thing I'll deal on now and then we'll close tomorrow I'll continue on the rest look at verse 5 and so it was whenever anyone came near to bow down to him that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him that's what he was doing to all of his father's sons verse 6 in this manner Absalom acted toward all Israel who came to the king for judgment so Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel Absalom stole their hearts Absalom stole their hearts. Maybe you have had people in this church in one time or the other in this ministry who did things like that. Don't go in their footsteps. People who were given privileged positions and they used it to steal the hearts of people. Broke away with the sheep of another man broke away with people he had labored to disciple said all kinds of things against the church and the pastor 
watch such people if they don't come to repentance their chapter is closed for life watch them i know what i'm telling you watch them so let me show you an absolute spirit is rooted in pride jealousy offense and selfishness i'll just deal on the issue of offense if you want to spot out an absolute spirit this is where it takes its root jealousy offense pride selfishness the absolute spirit is a spirit of betrayal second Samuel, please go down to verse 12 let me pick something from there the Absalom spirit is a spirit of betrayal. Then Absalom sent for Ahithophel and Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city, from Gilo, why he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy grew strong, for the people with Absalom continually increased in number. So Absalom was already getting an army to himself from his father's flock. That's a dangerous spirit. The spirit of Absalom is the spirit of rebellion. I'll soon show you why Absalom was turned out to be like this. So that when you start seeing small, small offenses in the church, start dealing with it. It may come from your pastor, it may come from your fellow brothers and all that. When you start spotting out offenses in your life, start dealing with it because you have contacted the spirit of Absalom. That is what gives the devil room to attack a church. The Bible says, woe, sorry, that offenses must come. But woe to the one offenses come from. So offenses are inevitable. No matter how you try, you must have people offending you. It could be your pastors, your parents, your brother in church, your sister in church. That's one of the strongest weapons in the hands of the devil for destroying great works. Offenses. If they're not dealt with they can deal with the ministry you wonder how a person who used to be loyal who used to be a good boy who used to be a good sister in church who used to be very dedicated and very faithful turned out to become a serpent turned out to become a satan you'll be wondering why it's offenses that were not treated offense is like cancer if you don't detect it fast and cut it off it will spread in your entire system and take you home it will eat up your whole system and begin to spread to other people in the church. You know what offended people do in church when they get offended? They start going from one door to the other, looking for army to recruit. They want people to sympathize with them. So they put their face somehow. You know what they're waiting for? For someone to ask them what is the problem. So once you ask them what is the matter, they start telling you what pastor did to them. And then they start getting sympathy gullible members start sympathizing with them so pastor is like that oh so that brother is like that and it's very usual with the ladies because they're the ones who are very emotional If you're a lady in church, you're close to your pastor, be careful. I'm talking from experience. You know, I want to get married now. <laughs> hey. The day I choose my wife, things started manifesting. You know one thing with Christine Hill, sir? We have come to that point where nobody's rebellion can affect the church. We are multiplying leaders anyhow now. Anyhow. And as we are multiplying, we are deploying. Anyhow. One lady just came out with the snake team. That's when they become very funny. That's when they start missing church service. Why didn't you come for church service? <laughs> it's nothing. My mommy said I should go and take care of some business for her. It's a lie. You thought pastor would tell you, hello, are you going my way? So when pastor finally choose you're angry that's when you will see their hatred for the sister show so i'll be addressing this one as mommy is you who don't have sense you see judah was busy killing joseph because he was intimidated by the dream of joseph 
little did he know he was the one with the lineage the lion of the tribe of judah should come from why are you angry with joseph whose destiny is just to be a prime minister in egypt your own is to be the tribe that will bring jesus the lion of the tribe of judah and you were killing joseph you are angry that your pastor choose a woman who is not you forgetting that there's a rule you have to play in destiny you cannot play if you are the wife of the man if they had married you you can't play that role you would miss out on it because god didn't design both of you to be together and there are times you may feel like oh i wish i married this lady but he has checked both spiritually and physically this thing will enter if we marry we'll have problems if we marry things will not go well so foolish daughters become offended instead of increasing their loyalty and their submission knowing that their man is on their way their man is on the way they leave the church some may stay for a while pretend for a while one year two years as they see the bond between their pastor and that sister increasing they start feeling discontented but you don't know that there's a man that fits into your life better selfishness and greed and offense creeps in it cripples your destiny and blows you out of the church that glory you once had is short-circuited the worst thing that can happen to a daughter on that training under a man of god is to marry wrongly worst thing. whether because your pastor didn't marry you or he didn't recommend the man you want to marry to marry you. sinatch will not be sinatch without these things you know when should have gotten married you know how many years she stayed the man who is married to Sinatch is not as pronounced as Sinatch. Nobody knows that man's name here. How many of you know his name? Nobody knows his name, but she's married. But that's the man that can fit that kind of woman to help her fulfill her destiny. That's the man who can be submissive and secure. How many of you know Pastor Peters and Pastor Eunice? If you look at the both of them, you know the one who is doing more. But do you see that other man's nature? is a reserved, calm nature. The other one's nature is a wild nature. If you bring a wild man to match with that woman, there will be trouble. So one must be willing to, to take some excesses for things to work. Is somebody who arranged it, if you don't know. There must be men who came for Pastor Yunis. Pastor Chris looked at it and said, not this one. Wait, not this one. Wait. When the right one came, he looked, looked. He said, okay, this can go. You think it's every man who would be comfortable that the wife is doing more than him pastoring the governor of his state has the largest church than him has the best members than him you think it's every man who can take it drive the best cars than him is a more senior pastor in the ministry than him you think it's every man who can take it sir it will take your pastor's wisdom to guide you to make the right choice One guy came for one of my daughters, used gym mix, used gym mix, and came, 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 came to him. It was a, a pastor under me. <laughs> I knew where he was going to. Because when the lady comes and flew anointing and preach, power will move in his mind. Wow, wow, I can imagine. Wow, whoa, come on. Is that coming to me, small, small, with small, small seed? I knew where he was going to. One day, someone called and told me, he said, you know, you were talking about this ministry, how we'll blow the world, how we'll take nations, and then I believe that marriage is one way that God can use. I said, yes, be talking, I'm hearing you. I said, so what are you saying? He said, I found, I found my missing rib in church. I said, who is she? He mentioned the girl's name. I said, forget about it. I said, forget about her. Don't go there. I said, me, I've not even chosen my wife. Now you did choose. You are a smart guy. What if she's the one I want to marry? I said, she's not even the one I want to marry. But your motive is wrong. When I disciplined him for taking that move, for making that move, the snake manifested. The snake in the guy manifested. But thank God the lady is wise. 
she's the one who keeps coming to me and telling me pastor thank you for saving me i would have crashed and she has a promising future in the ministry and then one of my friends a state pastor of the ministry pastor when i was preaching prophetically called her out and called her out and said let me tell you something your pastor has chosen his wife the next trap the devil have for you guys to destroy because you are the two closest to your pastor the next trap he has is one guy outside one guy just one guy maybe one guy with little money with little jeep maybe lexus he will just pass and blow you air conditioned and then he will just pick you one Romeo and Juliet and before you notice it you start comparing when I'm single my pastor is married my colleague is married why shouldn't I my time is going and then friends will gang up and start talking to you voices serpent will start talking hey you are still in that church by now you're not married are you crazy and guys are looking for you everywhere then your pastor is using charm on you if you're not careful you start filtering what they are telling you and you are blown out I want to end it this way because I don't have all the time tomorrow I will show you the reasons for Absalom's spirit why did Absalom develop that spirit I told you his offense and then I will show you some other traits and characteristics of Absalom and how to deal with the spirit of Absalom If you find some of these things building in you begin to ask god to help you it will destroy your destiny in few minutes bow down your head we believe you've been transformed by the wonders of god's word for additional information about us you can visit our website at www.princetonhills.org you can also send us a mail at info at princetonhills.org or call 070-331-66762 or 081-31-555-747 Princeton Hills Ministries Raising Global Raising Leaders global